Hey guys, what's up? My name is Shyan. I'm a senior software engineer at Harness and today we're gonna look at Harness Chaos Engineering, HCE, uh, what Harness has to offer in the chaos engineering space and we are gonna look at the features and also uh, walk you through a demo of how you can start chaos engineering in your own applications. Now first things first, before we jump into how to do it, we want to know where to do it. So to do that, we jump over to docs.harness.io, which is the documentation link for Harness. And then simply go to Chaos Engineering and there you'll see the Chaos Engineering documentation. So what is HCE? HCE is nothing but a Harness SaaS solution or a module in the Harness SaaS, which allows you to achieve continuous resilience in your uh, software de delivery cycle. Uh, it basically is not just for developers, but for SREs, for uh, QA teams, etc., to inject chaos, but in a resilient or in a controlled fashion so that it doesn't cause havoc in your system. Uh, so it's to prepare yourself for the worst and to achieve uh, faster incident response and recovery times and to increase the overall system resiliency of your applications. And of course, that leads to an improved customer experience. So that's what HC is providing. Now, if you scroll over and look into the other, uh, I'm sure you'll find a lot of value in this documentation. Uh, but of course, I'm going to show you the features uh, in the platform itself and not just uh, through the documentation. But yeah, yeah, feel free to explore the docs in your own time. Uh, and one thing I would like to mention is uh, the faults, which is you can see the amount of faults that are that you can target through HCE is huge. Uh, so you'll find a lot of variety in it. And also if I go over to what's supported, you will see that it's supported for these uh, different versions or these different distributions. Uh, and also the variety of uh, faults that I also already mentioned. You can see uh, a variety of different fault types that we can target and also in different uh, environments like Linux, Windows, VMware and so on. So once we are up and running with Harness, once we are over with getting started, what I also want you guys to do is check out the Etsy certification uh, where you can become a Harness Certified Chaos Engineering Developer, uh, which you can try, of course, right after we are uh, up and running with uh, our first Chaos Engineering uh, application. So getting started is super easy. All you have to do is go to app.harness.io. And once you're there, you would see a sign in page. Uh, if you're if you have not signed up or if you don't have an account, you can go ahead and do a sign up and then you can simply log in with your credentials. Since I already have my account, I'll just simply sign in. And once we do, we'll see a list of all the different modules that Harness has to offer. Cool. So once you're in, you'll see a welcome page and also a different list of modules that Harness has. What you can do is you can select a module from here. You can choose Chaos Engineering from here. Uh, or if you want to favorite it, you can, of course, configure this nav to change and include Chaos Engineering if it's not already included in your list. You can deselect the modules which you don't want to use and you can select the modules which you want to use and then kind of structure it like that. You can uh, shift the priority based on that. So if you want Chaos to appear much higher up in the list, if you are frequently using it or something like that. So feel free to configure it and then you should see chaos module appear up here. Once you click on that, you should be seeing a, you should be seeing a landing page like this. Now, all of this is completely free because in the free usage, you get up to 10 experiments per month. So it's completely free to use. Uh, so feel free to try it out and uh, hopefully you find some value in it. The step two is to create a project if you don't have one already. For me, I already have a ton of projects, so I can choose whichever one I would like to go into and do the demo. Uh, but yeah, for you, you might have to specifically create a project and then go in. Now, this is the overview section. This is where you'll be seeing all the activity happening, how many hubs you have, how many experiments you ran, uh, all the details of the ex experiments if you click on in the individual pipelines. So you'll see all the different kind of information accumulated in the overview. The chaos experiments is where all the different experiments that you ran or are going to run would be showing up. Uh, you can construct newer experiments from here. You can also filter, you can also uh, control what you want to see here in terms of experiment if you want specific infra types to be shown up here etc now the chaos hub is where you can see the enterprise chaos hub where uh, we provide all the different enterprise faults that are already there uh, pre-built by us and put in the enterprise repo so you can see there are a ton of faults 164 in the experiments and this is the same as the one that i shown earlier in the docs as well so if you go over to the uh, enterprise hub you'll see all these different categories uh, like a wide variety of faults that you can mix match try and create scenarios out of it based on uh, your hypothesis so yeah it's a ton of different uh, faults that you can try uh, and also a ton of different experiment templates if you just want to reuse the template, right? So you can go to uh, individual um, variety or individual type and then just click on launch experiment and they'll basically launch the 
specific template that you've selected so it's pretty easy to get started you can just select the template that you want or select the fault that you want and mix and match uh, customize it so of course i'll be showing it in the experiment uh, when i do the demo but yeah this is just the overview of uh, hubs and you might have seen there are a lot of the other hubs that are present as a part of this they are not really you know, enterprise hub but these are custom hubs that you can also connect in case you don't have or you don't find whatever you're looking for in this enterprise chaos hub you can of course create your own uh, faults and then connect it like so um, as a custom hub which you can use now heading over to game day so what exactly is a game day just to give an introduction it's basically a methodology which uh, chaos engineers use to execute uh, app, like chaos in your application at a specific time or at a specific you know a planned chaos uh, and that is basically the aim of this experiment is to test out uh, in a specific time frame or like plan this ahead of time uh, so that it's like a time period where uh, the team is involved and doing and uh, applying fatal scenarios in your application in safe environments and therefore kind of determining the resilience of your application um, uh, for systems that are at scale now how does a typical game day look like so if i see any of the game days pre-created you can see that uh, how many experiments were connected as a part of this game day you can of course select multiple ones how many runs did it have what was the objective uh, you can add a description to the game day you can also see the list of the different experiments that were used as part of the game day which infra did it target what was the environment which where the infra was hosted on and you can of course see a summary of the entire uh, game day if i go to the view run you can of course see a wider view of the run whether run passed or failed what was the execution result and so on uh, but yeah uh, this is how you can see the logs and what people did or like what was the incident response and everything now if I come over to the history, you can see the run history of the specific game day, uh, what was the execution result, um, what was the incident detected, etc. To create a game day, you can just click on create a new game day, you can give it a name. You can select the objective, in this case if it's exploratory, if it's a team training, if it's to validate some outage that happened previously or if it's to verify the observability, you can choose the specific type that you want based on that uh, description. is kind of pre-configured you can of course change it uh, and then you can select the different experiments or faults in the experiment that you want to target so in this case uh, we can select uh, experiments from one of the hubs in this case I can choose the enterprise chaos hub maybe I want to test the CPU hog and in here you would be selecting your infra which I haven't connected that's why you can't see any but yeah this is how you would do it typically you would select the chaos experiment and the infra where you want the game day injection or the chaos injection for the specific game day to happen and then you just add the experiment to the game day and once you do that it should be added to your specific game day like i showed cool now before i go ahead and uh, show the other features let me go ahead to the environment and connect to new chaos infra so this is where you'll be typically seeing all the different in infras categorized in a specific type in this case you can see pre-prod sandbox prod these are different ways of uh, categorizing multiple chaos infras under the same environment uh, that is a way for people or teams to isolate the different infras that are being used uh, allowing granular control uh, over the specific infras so for this case let me create a new environment i'm going to call it demo env i can see that i can select the type as non-production and create it so once i've done that i can go inside now once i'm inside i can select the infrastructure type uh, either for container orchestration i can select kubernetes or for operating system i can select linux or windows uh, for this demo i can just go ahead with kubernetes and enable a chaos infra on kubernetes so i'll be enabling this um, if you have an existing infra you can choose this uh, for me it's a new infra so i'm going to go with on new infra can i continue just going to name this uh, demo infra click on next so this is where you can select the installation type if it's on kubernetes on openshift or helm uh, and if you want to give it cluster wide or namespace scope access so you can also scope it down to a specific namespace for this i would select a cluster wide uh, because i have my applications running in another namespace in the cluster and i would want to target that uh, for the installation location i would change this to chaos uh, the service account i also want it to be in the chaos namespace so this is the namespace where the dependencies of the specific chaos infra is going to be installed so you can select the specific namespace uh, where you want this to be installed I would click on next and I get this uh, YAML uh, definition uh, pre-created for me. So I'll just download this and apply. So now that I have it downloaded, I just click on done and you will see the demo infra is in the pending state. So now all you have to do is apply this manifest in your cluster and just wait for it to be up and running and then the infra should be connected. So what I have here is a GCP cluster 
uh, and if I check the namespace is available you would see there is no chaos namespace as such there is a boutique namespace where my application which I'm going to target or do chaos on is relying is residing there's an HC namespace which I will not use and uh, there is no chaos namespace as such so all I have to do is do a cube CTL apply and just provide the specific manifest which in my case is this so just let me just hit enter and it should be applied to the cluster Cool. So now that it has been finished, let's see what it has created. If I check the get pods in the chaos namespace, you would see that these are the dependencies that were created. These were the services. So we have an exporter, an operator, a subscriber and a workflow controller. Now if I do a get namespace, you will see the chaos namespace popped up 55 seconds ago. So yeah, that's where uh, our infra is residing in this specific cluster. Uh, and since I also have a boutique in this uh, specific cluster, I can target uh, boutique through here, although they are in different namespaces, it does not really matter. So now we see the demo infra is connected and we also get a heartbeat of the infra. Now if we head over to the resilience probe, we'll see this is a pluggable check that users can introduce, or rather it's a mandatory feature of part of the uh, chaos injection journey to have a resilience probe pre-configured uh, before you jump into chaos execution that is to specify a pluggable check that you can introduce as a part of your chaos injection journey to test application health or to validate the scenario and as a the validation that you are creating as a part of the hypothesis so to create a new probe you can select new probe uh, then select the type of infra type of the probe that you want to target so let's say your experiment is a linux experiment then you might have to add a linux probe similarly for windows and kubernetes and so on you can select the type of chaos probe you'd want to create an http or command or dynatrace similarly for linux we have different and for windows we have different so if i let's say i want to select prometheus probe you can give it a name you can of course give tax and description it's up to you you can select the timeout in this case maybe it's 180 seconds the interval is two seconds this attempt of two you can select the verbosity and then you can also select the endpoint prometheus endpoint the type of authorization and tls if you want to configure that uh, then the query the prometheus query if you want to provide a query or query path the comparison type the assertion criteria and things like that so once you are happy with your configuration you can you'll see your probe show up here then you can of course filter based on the type of prometheus probe and kdis probe and so on so in this case i have this one ubi prometheus probe uh, you can go inside you can see the executions that the probe has had in your experiments if you hover over it you will see the specific experiment that this probe was executed on by whom what was the status etc uh, what mode uh, was the execution done on and if you go over to the probe configuration you'll see the what was the exact uh, criteria for this probe to pass what was the query uh, things like that so this is some extra validation uh, that would help assert your hypothesis while you're doing your chaos experiment now quickly moving on to dashboards chaos dashboard is nothing but a quick visualization of what is going on in your project so you can configure new dashboards or you can go to the main dashboard which is here at the bottom left uh, but yeah this is just a embedded version of the chaos dashboard from a general wider list of dashboards available at harness if you want to see the experiment runs uh, by user you can of course click on that and it will take you to the main dashboard so you can see a wider range of visualizations so you can see how many chaos experiments were ran last week or last month who is running certain experiments what was the exact number of experiments ran used in last year how much did it grow from last year last month things like that so you can get an overall view of uh, who is doing what how, how how proactively are you using chaos uh, in your team and how resilient your applications are becoming day by day so you can keep a track of all of that using chaos dashboard now moving on to chaos guard chaos guard is nothing but uh, an additional level of security that you would want to introduce as a part of your chaos injection to let or give certain users permission to exe execute chaos so it's, it's basically to restrict the availability of chaos execution just to anybody uh, but rather have a controlled granular rbac uh, as to who is to supposed who is supposed to do what just an extra secure layer on top that requires a higher governance policy and this is basically to minimize the blast radius and uh, mitigate potential security threats so in the screen you can see there are certain rules and there are certain conditions so if you move over to if i talk about the conditions first we, you can create multiple conditions first in the terms of what faults or what infras people can access so in this case if i go over to one of the conditions you can see that this condition may block any fault which have this specific criteria of the following so you can 
specify a fault and then you can either give it a wildcard or specify a certain fault that it i want this to be blocked i want the condition this this condition to block the execution whenever my fault meets the specific name or the specific criteria that i provide so you can of course add this and uh, create as many um, assertions or validations as you want and you can also choose the where clause so this is the what clause the where is this might block uh, the infra which is equal to the name of a specific infra and the which is the condition blocks this infra and this fault in which namespace and app label and the last is using which blocks the service account uh, which you're using so in this case if it's blocking or if it's checking if it's equal to the litmus admin then do all the above so of course you can introduce these controllable checks uh, to avoid malicious intent or to uh, minimize the blast radius whenever things could go wrong so this is just an extra security layer on top and on the right you see harness ada which is the ai solution that harness provides so it can generate the yamls for you so if you let's say w ask it that i want to block all faults on a particular chaos infra which is this abc and you give the name so it will generate the yaml for you and then you can simply click on apply yaml and it will apply the yaml and all the conditions related to it on the left uh, also you can just uh, if you don't like this you can try again or if you can you can just copy this and go to yaml and just paste this so that will also configure the same uh, for the specific condition now I don't want to save this so I'll just discard uh, and I go back to the rules so let's say I uh, used created the condition first and then when I create a new rule I can specify the user group in this case maybe uh, one of the account levels and then I'll just select which time I want this rule to apply I can select the end time I can select the recurrence things like that uh, I can give it a name and when I select next it'll see it'll it'll ask me which condition do you want it to apply so you can select the condition that you created as a part of as a part of the chaos enablement previously and then you can select on done and it should be created for you now jumping on to part two now that you know the different features that HC has to offer and also have a wider uh, understanding of uh, the different services let's jump into executing a chaos injection using HCE now before I jump into execution I want to show you the demo application that we are going to use so in this case it's the online boutique store uh, which is a GCP uh, microservice demo application that I've just installed on the cluster and I'm also going to show you the services that we have so in this case if I check the services that, that is there in the boutique namespace where my demo application is residing you'll see that these are the different services microservices created as a part of the installation of the demo app uh, and we have one of the service called card service and this is the service we can actually target so what this card service is doing is uh, just adding stuff to cart so if i let's say select sunglasses i want two of them and i add them to cart so you can see this is the card service this is responsible for handling the cart logic and also the addition of the value in the quantity in the cart so i want to disrupt this service and create a uh, simulate uh, behavior of uh, uh, container or pod getting evicted and what happens how does the how does my application handle this uh, nicely so if i take a look at this specific service and describe it I will see the labels that it has used is app equal to card service. So one of the ways, although there are multiple ways to select what you want to target and what you want to bring down, one of the ways would be could be to select um, uh, this specific look for this specific selector, and that would target this uh, service that is present in my cluster. Now, if you have the same uh, selector applied in multiple uh, services then it might not be the best way to go about it because that would bring down all the services matching this uh, specific selector so in that case you might have to give it a unique selector or you might have to choose some other annotation uh, or give it uh, like a unique label or something so that way you have to configure what faults you want to run or how you want to narrow down or make uniquely target the specific service or application you want to bring down so in my case this is unique to me uh, so I will just use the app equal to card service uh, selector and it should specifically target the uh, card services and all the dependencies of the card services. So I head over back to the chaos experiments uh, tab and in here I can select new experiment. Now once I go over and select new experiment, I can give it a name of boutique app or boutique card disrupt. 
I can of course give a description or tag I don't want to for now. I'll select the Kubernetes Intra type since my Chaos Intra is residing on the Kubernetes uh, cluster uh, in the Chaos namespace specifically. So I'll select the demo Intra which I created. It does not have any experiments or any experiment runs because it's fresh. I'll apply that. I'll go ahead and click on next. So here I can select either I want to upload a full-fledged YAML if I have one already. I can choose templates from the Chaos Hub if I uh, want to replicate something that's already there created uh, which in my case I don't really want to so I would rather go for blank canvas but this is something that's interesting uh, that you might want to use and then finally the blank canvas which is select and arrange faults from scratch uh, to give you all the power so this is the chaos studio where you can mix and match and modify uh, different uh, faults and create a giant scenario or experiment out of it so right now I don't have any uh, faults in this experiment so I'm gonna select kubernetes from the enterprise hub you can also see the other hubs that are uh, private or custom so from here i can choose spot delete and i can select the application namespace so in this case my demo app is residing on boutique namespace i will select the app kind as a deployment i can also select the labels and then you can select the app label of cart service so this is the exact label that uh, we targeted before this one now you can see it's also discovering the other uh, labels that are present or selectors that are present in the in the specific namespace uh, but we want to target this one specifically cool so if i go over to tune for it now this is the part of the chaos engine which you can modify which you can tweak to change the interval or the total chaos duration so in this case maybe you want it to go for 30 seconds and not 15 seconds you want to update the interval you want it to be force equal to true so no matter what happens just inject chaos i don't care things like that so and you can uh, choose a priority as to if you have let's say multiple faults so and one of them are more important to you is more important than the other so you can give that one a higher priority and the other one a lower priority so that case if the lower one fails your resilience score won't be affected as much cool and for the probes uh, since resilience probes are mandatory uh, in order to do assertions uh, so we can select one of the probes so in this case maybe we can create a new probe you can call it uh, it's an HTTP probe which is boutique assert and basically what it will do I'll give it a timeout of 180 seconds an attempt of two and the verbosity I want to get info logs and I want this to assert the specific URL where my boutique service is running so in this case I would go back copy this URL I will change the method to a get method I will compare the response code and I'll see if this response code is equal to 200 or not so it's basically doing an assertion if this specific URL or the external endpoint of the service is available or not uh, if chaos happens and let's say the entire front end goes down then this is not really a valid assertion so that's why your probes might fail uh, if that happens if you have a total uh, outage so that is what it's trying to assert a simple assertion nothing too complicated so it will go and create that now i have this http probe i can select this i can add to fault i can select the execution mode uh, you can pause the video and read about this uh, but yeah it's just basically where what time uh, of exe uh, what time do you want the probe to be executed so in this case i want the uh, sot apply and then i'm just going to select apply changes and save so once i have it saved uh, i can go to the yaml and i can also show you the entire yaml that is created as a part of this now of course um, you don't have to modify it you can uh, they are they are both synced equally so uh, if you just are happy with the visual all of these changes are there in the yaml too but if you're more of, of, of an advanced user you can of course mo modify the yaml and they should be uh, synced both way if you would also want this to not be a single run and have a recurring cron job so you can go to the schedule and you can change the type from non-cron to cron and then you can specify the cron uh, rate so you can select at what interval it's going to uh, rerun again if it's weekly monthly yearly minutes everything so for this i'm just going to do non-cron i don't have a requirement to make it cron and then i'm just going to run it so once i run this you will see that the logs come logs getting popped up so this is the chaos guard rule that is popping up and then we'll have the install chaos steps the actual chaos execution the fault uh, and then it's a cleanup chaos resource which will basically gracefully delete all the resources it created as a part of the chaos injection things like the runner uh, the the different chaos injectors uh, the chaos jobs etc meanwhile i can go over to the cluster uh, and show you what's actually going on 
So if I open the specific uh, namespace where the infra was residing, you can see that the boutique card disrupt. This is the experiment, uh, the glow higher up experiment. So th this is basically running. It's trying to spin up multiple uh, runners and helper pods that will be actually responsible for doing the chaos injection. So as you can see, it's creating. It's it has created a runner and it's trying to doing a do a pod delete. Now if I go over to the boutique app and see the card service namespace which is this one you can see it's running for 43 hours i can restart this i can redo it uh, now at this point of time at the background you can see it's trying to inject pod delete now at any moment of time the service will break as you can see the card service just restarted and now if i go back to the boutique application the demo one and if i try to reload it will simply break because uh, the service is no longer healthy it's trying to reconnect it's trying to get back up but it's not in a healthy state right now so this uh, service is right out failing and that is one of the hypotheses we had in mind when we were creating this uh, chaos scenario you can see the logs over to the right and you can see uh, what exactly is happening which pod it is killing uh, what is the probe success percent uh, if probe is successful or failing uh, and also if you go to the probes you can see the different probes that are uh, a part of this so you might have a question that where did health check come from i just provided the boutique asset so health check is uh, was already present as a part of the manifest that came from the enterprise hub uh, that's why it's already there uh, this is not really a resilience probe but this is the one that we actually configured so health check is doing not it's just basically checking if this if the particular application is up and running or not so it's just a simple uh, assertion there's nothing else now both the probes have passed if you go to the logs and once it's done we will see all the resources that were created as a part of the chaos are gone because of the cleanup chaos resource. So let's head over to the other watch command. You'll see uh, the, the other runners and the pod delete, all those that were created as a part of the execution. Uh, they had gone already. And once this finishes, these will go to. Okay, now you see the cleanup chaos resource step is also finished. If we come back, we see that the boutique uh, experiment is not there at all and it's back to how it was uh, at the starting when we just had the infra installed and nothing else and if I come over to the application on uh, the boutique application and refresh it should be back up as it normally would have so yeah that's uh, that's uh, the demo of how you can inject chaos how you can start your chaos engineering journey with HCE it's very simple and you can of course try 10 experiments for free without any kind of uh, restrictions so yeah I, I would definitely uh, encourage you to go ahead and check it out with that thanks for watching see you soon